Hi everyone, welcome to Data Trek. So today we are going to build a small uh, web application using Streamlit. So this is nothing out of ordinary. We are just using the functions from Streamlit documentation. If you go to docs.streamlit.io and uh, click on API reference and see you have all the functions available to build a data app like this. I have just added few of the functionalities from the documentation and uh, this is how it look in the end. So all these are inbuilt functions. I'm just going to use those functions to simply present to you the possibilities that Streamlit offers. Let's take a look at the code now and see what is happening in the code before we try to containerize it. So here I have a simple uh, Python file which contains the necessary imports, Streamlit, and this is a simple PIL import for our image. As uh, we can see on the UI, we have two buttons. One is named present and one is named snow. And both these buttons uh, showcase different uh, graphics when, they, when pressed. And I um, uh, actually uh, had added two images on the UI just for the demonstration purpose. And I've added a small bar chart. You can add anything of your wish from the documentation. And everything we were simple copy and paste. And you can customize the functions as you want. And the documentation is pretty clean. You can explore this documentation and see what you can do for your own AI or machine learning app and how you can present your data to the user. So let's go back to our code and see what is happening. With our Python file in place, let's see how we can containerize this application and access it through a Docker. You can ignore these warnings because these packages are not installed locally, but we are going to install them inside the Docker. So this warning doesn't matter as long as the Docker runs and we are able to access the uh, UI through Docker. So in the Docker file, we can see I'm using Ubuntu image. The reason being I'm going to explain the functionality of this demonstration. And I'm uh, using work directory as the user directory. And inside that, I have app and source where I'm going to place my source files. And this is completely optional on uh, using language as well, in this you can you can ignore this for now. I'll use this functionality as we go along. Make necessary app to get packages or uh, updates to make sure that the Ubuntu image that we are up downloading will be having the uh, updated dependencies and security patches that are necessary. And uh, once everything is up, I'm going to install the. Uh, I'm uninstalling Python inside this run and I'm uh, upgrading the pip. Once the pip is upgraded, I'm installing Streamlit and placing all the files from my local into a root directory in the container. And in the end, I'm running a command called Streamlit run. This is the default way to run Streamlit applications. With the Docker image in place, we can um, build an image and we can create a container using that image. Let's see how we can do that. Let's see if we have any containers running. No, we don't have any container running. And let's explore if we have the image. So these are my local images that I'm uh, doing for other demonstrations. Let's ignore them for now. So let's try to build the Docker image using this uh, Docker file. So let's call Docker build everything inside my current working directory. I'm going to include that and I'll add a tag. I'll call this tag uh, by my uh, Docker of name followed by the name that I want to provide to this Docker image. Let's call this as Streamlit Build for the lack of a better name. So uh, I have already built this image, so it is going to be quick for me. But if you're doing this for the first time, it might take a little while for you to build the image completely. So let's, in our, let's now see if we have the Docker image listed in our, our directory. Yes, we have the Docker image listed. So let's run this Docker image and create a container out of it. And let's see how we can access the UI to this image. So to do that, we just have to call Docker run followed by the image ID that we do. But before that, we need to report forwarding to make sure that the traffic from within the container has to be accessed from outside the container. For that, we will do port forwarding onto 8080 is our local port. 
and the stream with exposure support called 8501. So what this is doing is it's telling Docker basically to direct any traffic that is coming from 8501 to 8080 and enable the user me to access it from my local machine. Let's run that. Yeah, so the Streamlit browser has been started and we can see that it is running on 8501. But we can access the Streamlit application through our local on 8080 because thanks to the port forwarding functionality and uh, everything that is in the main.py file has been presented in the UI and everything should work as we expect and shouldn't crash. Yes. We can see everything is running as intended, and we can see the images displayed, and the captions are coming in. Yeah, everything is working as we expect it to work, and the Docker container build is completed and it is running successfully. Let's see if we can list the Docker container and see if it is presented in our Docker list. Let's run Docker. Yes, yes, we have a running Docker container and. It's running the default command stream it run main.py and it started just a minute ago. All right, guys, that's all I have for this video. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and please to or subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And thank you for watching this video and keep learning. Bye.